Hello team. In this reporting quickie episode, we'll be focusing on the structure of your report. So, breaking down what we're going to do in today's contents, we've got well, why, for, why is the structure important? Then we're going to look at a poor example, followed by a decent example of structure and report. And we're going to finish off with some resources to assist in going further than examples and structuring your own report to get a great grade. So why is the structure important? Well, without a recognised structure, it can be quite hard to read a report, even harder to mark. And you'll agree that's probably quite important why you're actually looking at a series, you want a good mark. But have no fear, there are recognised structures for every type of report, and in the following slides I will show you one method on how to determine that. Additionally, a well-defined structure can help tremendously in the report writing process. It's like doing the edges of a jigsaw. Once you've done that, you can get right in the middle and start working away at other things. So the structure is a great skeleton to your report. And once you've done that, you can get onto the actual meat of the report. So let's take this marking rubric as an example. This is just an example marking rubric. Uh, your assessment may use a different one. You have to make sure. You're most likely to find this marking rubric at the bottom of your coursework descriptor. So in the, the, the document which tells you where you uh, what is required for your coursework, if you scroll down, you'll find this. So taking this as an example, we want to look at the, the section and slash grade column. This is where each section, and unfortunately I don't have a sound effects budget for this series, but I'll have to do it myself. So this is where each section, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, is listed and provided a percentage. So just to make that very obvious, here is the structure. And we've taken away the, the comments and we've just got the section slash grade and I've just gi I've given you a definition for each of these um, sections here. This is just in case you've never came across these type before. Now you'll see that there's a, there's a little bit out of whack here. Um, there's actually I've bullet pointed less than there actually is in the, the section slash grade and that's where we have to look at this a bit more closely. So you can see on the right hand side we've got abstract introduction, literature review, the methodology, results, discussion, conclusion. Now one thing we have to notice is that there's no references in bibliography that's because that's more meta to do with the, the actual uh, the content of the report not the structure. But overall isn't there as well, and that's because overall is really just the kind of the mark you get for your structuring. But it's not the only mark you get for your structuring. The structuring can have a big um, influence on the mark you get for, for example, your discussion or your results. So it's more overall formatting and structuring is going to matter for the overall section. But this kind of um, one we've got here, the abstract introduction, literature review, methodology, results, discussion, it's called IMRAD. So really it just kind of comes from introduction, methods, results, analysis, discussion. But this is a little bit different because we've got literature review, which is usually found in an independent uh, research kind of assessment, more seen in your research writing quickies. Ideally, when faced with this outline, your first immediate step should be to insert these sections, so for example, abstract, introduction, lit review, methodology, and so on, as headers, as the top level headers in your document. And keep them in the exact same order. There's no reason to get fancy. Just stick to the marking rubric for the kind of the chassis of your report. Once you've done this, think to outline each of these sections, what am I going to have to require in my introduction? I might need to put some aims in. So that's when you do a subsection and you keep on just kind of section these all down and make it more hierarchical with these, the sections that you find in the marking rubric being the top level of your hierarchy. So I can't really show you a full report because that would be quite boring, more boring than this already is. So what I'm going to show you is a table of contents because when we're marking, I'll let you in a bit of a secret, we look at the table of contents because we can tell very easily if there's going to be formatting issues in the table of contents or from the table of contents I should say. So in this poor example, in quotation marks there, poor, I've highlighted five aspects, four that require improvement and one that shows good practice. These are colour coded red and green. So let's tackle these chronologically. Start with number one, 
The abstract should not be included in the table of contents, nor should it be numbered. So the abstract shouldn't be in the table of contents, and it shouldn't have one before it. This is something you don't really get told when it comes to the formatting of the kind of academic or university work. It's just something you have to pick up on. But now that you've seen this mistake happen in this exemplar, hopefully you won't make it too. Moving on to the next one, the instruction and aims are two different sections. Well, this isn't exactly incorrect. This isn't a good practice either, as the aims should be no longer than like a paragraph, really. So there's no point in giving it a full section on the equivalent of an uh, introduction. So therefore, you should probably make it a subsection of the introduction. The opposite problem plagues number three where we've got results as a subsection of the methodology, however, it should be the other way around, where there should be two distinct same level methodology and uh, results. And then number four, we've got, for the conclusion, we can see the report gets it right on the third try. We can see that they've correctly subsectioned the conclusion to have a subsection that says future work. Using subsections appropriately can really help you understand the structure and the weighting of a report. Um, this is how the second aspect to be rectified. And five, finally, as I said previously, overall isn't a report section, so this person's just copied the rubric and not thought about what does overall mean. I wonder what they wrote in that section. Now moving on to a decent example, here are three aspects I want to touch on. In the first aspect, this example has used procedure and implementation rather than just an overall methodology. You should avoid any confusion and try to stick to the same language that's used in the marking scheme. Ensure you aren't docked for structure for this. So for this example, an overall section of methodology followed with subsections for procedure and implementation would be an easy solution to fixing this issue. Results have been split up into meaningful subsections, which is a brilliant, fantastic um, piece of good practice here. But what we can see is it isn't consistent throughout the document. We don't see in the implementation experiment one or two because we still need to know how to set these up. So if you had under implementation another subsection that said experiment one, implementation of network scanning, that would be brilliant. And you can see there'd be a story weaved through the table of contents. So it really hit that home. You Ideally, you want to mirror these existing subsections when they are discussed in the methodology. Labelling the subsections allows for someone to flick through the document looking for that specific part um, much easier. Again, it tells a story in your table of contents. Number three is a, a bit of a sneaky one. From the table of contents, we can see that the discussion and the conclusion are on the same page. However, from the weightings we saw in the marking rubrics, having these on the same page isn't really filling me with hope. But this actually happens all the time because students forget to update their table of contents. Table of contents should be the last thing you really update on your document. Um, there's a thing in Microsoft Word, which we'll find in a Microsoft Word quickie, which you can update your uh, field and that will update it in reflection to maybe it's went over a page or whatnot. This is what happens when you create your table of contents and don't update it. Here are some resources to aid in structuring your report. Some of these are well worth a read. Definitely go away and have a flick through these. It will help you decide when and where to subsection appropriately, among other things. So to summarise, this episode has looked at your report structure and why it's so important to both you, the reader, and the writer. We've seen poor formatting mistakes and some good practice through the two table of content exemplars, which you can learn from and hopefully do better than in your real report. With ample further reading resources, you can expand upon your knowledge instruction to secure a good mark. And with that, this episode's over. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck.